Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice 1 to 1. This is another school job where we're installing an EV charge point. You can see we've got this all stripped out behind me. Matty and Nathan have been here um, through the course of the last week, getting some of this ready. I can show you what work they've already done. We're going to go through connecting up into this existing board. Just got the one charge point on this one, it's only a small primary school. I'll spin you around, we'll have a look at the main intake and go from there. So you can see this is our sub board down in the plant room. We've got a nice feed into here. There is low load on all of these circuits already. It's basically emergency lighting, and the gate control for the school, uh, a socket below the distribution board, and not an awful lot else in truth. Um, the BMS panel's coming out. This is getting a new BMS system fitted in through the course of these holidays as well. It's having a new supply brought down to it. Um, they're on with that in the school at the minute. It's also been re-roofed. There's a lot going on here. So we've got plenty of capacity in this board to drop a single EV charge point in. You can see it's quite congested up here. So our cable's this one on this tray. So you can see there, Matty and Nathan have managed to squeeze in a bit of tray across the top, and then it scoots out to the external of the building. So outside's there. There's a load of scaffold up for the roofers. I'll try and get you some footage out there down to the charge point. You can see we've got the power off because the emergency light's on. This is all totally isolated. Nathan's with me today. He's just gone to get another battery for the drill because he's got midway through popping a little hole into this enclosure and it's died on him. Got the hand tool set out, cover off the trunk in so you can see our cables running in down through here. The idea is we're going to fit a little board at the side there to house our RCD. And for those of you who watched the last video, you'll know exactly why. So we've got our four pole RCD there. We've gone for MCG because it's low cost solution and the enclosures were readily available on the shelf. We have got some Proteus as well because we couldn't get enough RCDs. Um, so we've got a Proteus board going in at one of the other schools that I think we're also gonna feature on a video. But for now, we'll have a look at Nathan dressing these away. So again, we've got the white car cable in, which is very annoying on that 100 meter drum we're trying to use up, so that is what it is. A um, little bit of straightening up to do here. Get the enclosure on the wall. We'll see Nathan doing that. Uh, make sure we've got all of our eye dents on the cables ready to rock and roll. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll show you it as the video moves along in a sec. These boards are always quite good for those of you who've not worked in them before. They have the neutral screens on. See, it's very difficult to come into contact with the neutral. These prongs are all actually dead until these covers are moved out. So. There is an argument that you can open these in a reasonably safe fashion. It's not something I would ever advise doing, but it's one of the more safe boards internally to work within because of those reasons. Um, so yeah, it's always an option. It's nice to see the install on this actually. It's been done pretty well. We've got washers in the back of the board, which is always a good sign. Everything's bushed and coupled in nicely. You know, the cables are reasonably well dressed and um, it's looking in quite good health. So we've got something nice to work from. The wider plant room, just to show you, it's quite a big one. We've got a nice big water tank there, all these pumps and all the rest of it, these boilers. Um, and again, this is all coming out, I'm told. I don't know why. Um, some of it looks fairly recent to me, but that's beyond my pay grade. So yeah, I guess it is It is what it is there. There must be some sort of um, maybe running benefits. So economy, I guess, with the price of gas and electric these days, that could be driving that decision. But I'm just waiting for Nathan to get back. He'll get a battery in there, get that hole opened up. Get this mounted on the wall we'll show him dressing it away and have a little chat with him and see how he's getting on with his apprenticeship and um yeah catch up with you in a sec so you can see nathan's got this um little mcg board mounted on the side we've um lock ringed that in so you can see we've got a couple of lock rings on each side and one in the middle and then a threaded tube through that so 25 mil then we've got our circuit passing in to this enclosure and that's to put that four pole rcd in line with the charge point as we've realized these pod point um, solo threes need. It's popped the breaker in the board here for our sub main if you like down to that board and this is providing overcurrent protection to the charger and we've got a C40 on there. We've got our cabling in ready to do the in and out on this RCD. This over there ready to go into the MCB so Nathan's just working through wiring those up now. Obviously once we've got it all in and loosely fitted we can um, then do the torque settings get our cable idents on and make sure everything is set up as needs be and we'll jump back on once he's got to that stage and you can have a little look 
at the finished article. So you've got a little earth fly lead on the bottom down there as well. And that's going to go into the earth bar in here. It is coupled through, as I said, so there is an earth path between the two enclosures, but belts and braces, we might as well pop a little earth fly lead in to make sure that enclosure is properly earthed. Um, yeah, is what it is. You're getting on all right there, Nathan? Yeah. Enjoying it? Yeah. Do you understand why we're fitting the RCD on this charge point like this? No. No. Well, a lot of the chargers have the Type A RCDs built into them now, but they don't comply. Well, some of them don't comply with the British standards. I'm not sure on this Pod Point Solar Three if it actually has it in or not, because it claims to have the six milliamp DC protection built in. So it's a little bit confusing. I'm going to guess that it doesn't, um, and that's why they've stipulated it. But some of the chargers have those Type A's built in, but we still have to do this anyway. Caught me out a little bit, so that's why we're having to kind of retrofit these into the circuit. So you basically get your overcurrent protection off this. So that's giving us the 40 amp protection on the circuit down to the charge point. And then this gives us our 30 milliamp type ARCD protection. So we feed into this out of that. And then the charge point, its final circuit has got the overcurrent protection and the four pole RCD. So you couldn't fit a four pole RCD in this board because there's nowhere to mount one. Because you could have gone for an RCBO option. But it would only open the three phases if you could get the type a three phase rcba for this board so that's the way you have to set it up so we'll have a little look at nathan on time lapse wiring up this rcd you'll see me getting him a few snaps for his portfolio there he's just dressing away the cables into that four pole rcd the white steel wire armor is really tricky to strip nathan had a bit of a struggle with it so i gave him a demonstration of how to do it badly and he figured it out for himself how to do it properly. You see he's getting them all in there and these are all talked down afterwards. Point of note with that MCG enclosure, it is just a traditional consumer unit, but I'm happy it's doing its job holding that four pole RCD quite safely. The maximum short circuit currents down here are small enough for it not to be an issue and I'm happy with that as it is. Nathan's finding a nice neat and tidy route around the distribution board, making sure we can dress those cables in neatly and make them safe and serviceable for the next person coming along who might have to test this in a few years, namely ourselves, when we come to put all the sleeving and covers and load monitoring system in. So we're not cutting these short, we're not leaving it all wrapped tight behind the board. So pop the trunking lid back on. We've got our board all wired, power's still off, so you can see we've got our overcurrent protected vice here, our circuit's running away and into the top of this RCD. Final circuit out to the charge point out the bottom. Um, we're going to put eye dents on all of these, obviously. We've still got the load monitoring kit to fit. We're going to get oversleeved um, on the conductors, so don't judge us too harshly on that at the minute. It's not quite finished. But we can get this turned on and do some testing from the charge point, make sure it commissions properly onto the pod point system. I'll show you running through the form and how you fill that in as best I can, but obviously it's got client details on, so I need to be a little bit careful. Um, and then we'll maybe run through some testing on the pod point, see how it behaves with a six milliamp DC leakage test. Um, just interested how that performs with the TIS MFT Pro and its mechanism of testing for that six milliamp DC leakage and also a pod point kind of saying in their instructions that such a test doesn't really exist um, in truth. So we'll see how that pans out in just a sec. We're gonna pop the lid on all of this, get it covered up, turned on, um, and we'll see you outside. So this is our charge point on the wall. You can see the guys have dropped down. Um, it comes above this scaffold board. There's roofers in here at the minute. So we can't really show you what's going on up there, but it goes off up in some containment and runs along down into the plant room, which is in that back corner there. You can see we've got our blue light on, the all important blue light with the pod point. That means it's ready to charge and go. This one's called Emile Shet, and um, it's got its little serial number on there. I've been through the commissioning process. Um, so that's all set up now and on pod point system. They should have emailed the client for them to set the charging tariff and everything on there. You can see at the minute, I've been through the test sequence on this with the MFT Pro. I've shown it loads on the channel. I'm not gonna go through it now because it's a faff with all of the leads. This did operate with a six milliamp DC leakage, but it didn't seem to trip an internal RCD within it. So I don't think it actually has that built in. I could be wrong, but it doesn't seem to be there to me. Obviously our RCD up front operated, but just to give you a quick run through, of just using the adapter itself. Obviously this is a 32 amp three phase. So set it to 32 amps. Make sure you're on status okay. If we swing across into mode C, that's the charging state. Now you'll see these lights probably flashing on video for you, but I can assure you they are solid this end. That's just the nature of flicker on the camera that I don't know how to turn off 
and now we've got the green light on the pod point so it's ready to start a charge cycle now the charge stops if you don't confirm within 15 minutes via the app so this is all done on the apple store and google play where you can pay for your charging uh, and again that's all on the system that the school has to set charge tariffs and allow access to certain people and not others i guess um, you can if you want swing through fault states so if you put it into a faulty pe you can see it's isolated the charge point it's no longer outputting charge you put a faulty earth on and you get the red flashing light on the pod point to tell you that there's something not quite right and it ain't going to let you do anything revert it back to status okay and you're good to go again so you can use these without the actual test instrument just to run it through a sequence um, and prove you've got all your phases that there is an earth path um, obviously to do your full set of tests you need the mft pro which is tucked away in my bag there just add it out and like i say all the leads everywhere moving about it just takes too long if you want to see a testing sequence on these i've shown it on rolex my energy zappies it's all the same process so i didn't want to include it in this video but let's go and look in the plant room and just step back and show you here that there is going to be a parking bay here like i say there's loads of building work going on we've got skips temporary accommodation for the staff that are working pallets kingspan roofers are in not making it up there is a lot going on on this site um so i would have shown you more of outside but you know it would include other people and whatnot so i'm uncomfortable with that i'll show you in the plant room how it looks as it's come together now we're going to get packed up and um this is waiting for the load limiting stuff now sorry load monitoring kits not been delivered as yet as soon as we get them get them installed on these put all our sleeving and eye dents on at the same time and sign these off as complete we've still got a good four weeks before the schools are back so there's no grand rush on it um we're around loads of these sites all the time so let's go look in the plant room Okay, so we're back in the plant room now. The power is all restored. The um, control panel for the heating system, that's in the hands of the guys working on the heating system in this at the minute. So they're inside repiping things from the looks of it. Um, and obviously they're gonna come in and put a new control panel in for all of that and whatever else they're getting set up. And it's gonna get its own dedicated supply from the main intake back in the school. Um, so that's in their hands, but we've got our board back on. And Niffen's done a cracking job inside here. Just put a temporary label on for the time being because my label printer is on another site. I've left it, typical. I always leave something somewhere. So we need to go and grab that. And when we come back, put the load limiting kit in and put our idents on all the cables and oversleeve those white um, conductors and make sure everything's identified correctly. We can also pop the labels on. But just to give anyone who comes in here looking a fighting chance, we'll just pop that on for the minute. And same with the RCD just a little label up there. Um, these are gonna be left isolated for the time being, so they're not gonna be on. Obviously run through the, we've obviously run through the test process and got them commissioned and set up on the pod point system. I couldn't show you that because it has the client's name, email address, telephone number, site address, the longitude and latitude. It's just a form basically of everything you shouldn't share publicly. So I couldn't really show you that. It's about a page long, all the data goes in, picture of the charge point. I assume Podpoint will then contact the customer to say you need to set charging tariff up for this now to get it online for people to use and that's going to be getting done in September so they're not activating these for anyone to use until that time. We're going to come around and put the load limiting kits in um, in the next couple of weeks if our delivery time scale is as promised. And at that stage, we can put all of the oversleeving on, um, heat shrink those down, get the idents on the cables, and make sure they're all connected properly with the load monitoring system. And I'll show you that on at least one of the jobs as we move these videos along, if I'm around, because I'm on holiday. But we'll try and get Matthew to get some footage if I don't manage it. Nathan's done a cracking job inside these. You will have watched him stripping the um, steel wire armor. That white, for those of you who've not worked with it before, it's different insulation to what you would find with a normal colored car colors. For some bizarre reason, it's like um, an XLPE, but more like a PTFE finish on it. It's like a silicone finish. So I guess there's something in the mix on that insulation that's different to what they use in the normal colors. Pfft, don't know. So it is a little bit harder to strip, but Nathan found his way with that and also put the singles across into this um, MCB on there as well wired up the RCD and he's helped and assisted Matthew in popping all this tray up as I said it runs outside over the roof drops down to the charger but as we've got guys working up there um, I didn't want to be up filming other people and um, yeah so we're not doing that but otherwise 
If you have any questions, drop them in below. We're going to keep some of these videos coming, installing more of these pod points. We've got some of the T22s going in as well. Um, there was some already on the channel if you want to go and check those out. That had Nathan installing the three phase board in full for those. Um, so you can go and watch that if you want. Like I say, testing process we've already covered on loads and loads of these chargers already. And it's just a fiddle to record and get all the probes and leads in the right order in the right place. So I figure that is ticked off and done. If you want to watch it, go and check one of those videos out from earlier on in my channel. Um, it's on the thumbnails and the titles, so you can't miss it. And again, pretty simple process once you get into it. That TSM, TIS MFT Pro makes it an absolute doddle because it has the instructions on the screen. Um, yeah. So for those of you who are thinking of getting yourself as a tester and getting involved in EV, that's the recommended go-to from me. Otherwise, we'll leave this one here. Drop your questions and comments in below. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you're enjoying the content. And the all-important, subscribe to the channel. That makes a massive difference. And thank you to everybody who's getting involved in this little video series so far. I'll see you on the next one.